You have a colored sheet in front of you, the matrix, the archetype matrix. And it shows you the different personalities and how they combine. But the most important part of this matrix is the ways in which different personalities communicate and the way that they are most likely to add value in totally different ways. When we work with teams in companies like Intuit and Cisco, when we go in and we work with teams, we see there's not a right way of doing it, but each person on the team has to be clear about the ways that they're different and the ways they're most likely to have successful interaction. And that begins not with understanding how you see the world, but understanding how the world sees you and have each person on the team understand how the world sees you so the team can rise to its own highest level. Now, I'm gonna deconstruct the matrix. Originally, when I began studying this with brands, I knew that there were seven different advantages, seven different ways of adding value. But then about three years ago, we had a breakthrough. We realized with human beings, human beings are not as simple as brands. Human beings weren't created in a laboratory. Human beings have a primary and a secondary. When you merge those, very predictable trends emerge. And those trends are the three adjectives that are on your matrix. Once you find out your archetype by taking the fascination advantage assessment, you can come back to this matrix and find the adjectives that describe who you are at your best. And you can put these adjectives in your LinkedIn bio. You can put them in your Twitter bio. You can use them to describe yourself when you're introducing yourself. Let me describe which words you might use. This is the average result. And I want you to look at the red bar that's behind me. That's, that's uh, primary power. This is the average result of a quarter of a million people we've assessed. Now I'm gonna show you your result, ready? Wow, yeah, I'm hearing this like a little ruffle of wow, 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 right? So let's go back, let's take a look. Average, watch the red, your results. So what we found, no surprise, we got a bunch of overachievers in the room. But you even overachieved on overachieving. You are 115% more likely than the average population to have power as your primary advantage. So what this means is that within this room, if we were a team, that our team would be focused, opinionated, decisive, but sometimes we would need help on implementation, detail, and execution. So people who don't have primary power can actually become more valuable by supporting the team in rising to its highest level. Here's what it looks like a pie chart. Average population, our population. Here's what it looks like taking that same matrix that you have in front of you, and we put it with numbers so that you can see once you've done the assessment, you can see, do you have one of the more prevalent archetypes or do you have one that's more rare? Sometimes the most rare ones can be the most precious. If you're a visual person like me, <laughs> you like to have dots. There's one dot for every person who took the assessment in our, in our sample group. And imagine being able to do this with your team. Imagine you have a blank version of this heat map, being able to put one dot for every person on your team to see what the patterns are. Where are you most likely to succeed and where are you most likely to fail? In this group, you can see there's a bumper crop of one archetype, primary power, secondary prestige, and this is the maestro. Maestros are ambitious, focused, and confident. Quintessential leader, hunt the deer, hunt the deer, hunt the deer. They're great at getting things done in, a, in, in difficult circumstances. If you'd like to learn more about this, my book is gonna be coming out in July 1st, but IBM has been so cool. They've made it possible for me to share with you pre-advanced copies. So I'm gonna be doing a book signing. And my team and I are here and we can talk to you about how you add value, how your team adds value, and how you can become a high-performing enterprise. It'll be over in the Solution Center right back there. I'd love to see you there. Now, the, the, the key takeaways from the book are the three words that you're going to need to impress and influence others, the in-depth data that we've gotten on how companies add value, and we're going to show you that inside the research, we can point out to you what we've learned. Now, here's what I want you to remember for the rest of the conference. You don't have to learn how to be fascinating. You have to unlearn how to be boring. You've already learned how to be fascinating, but over time, you become more boring. Especially if you have a brand disadvantage. If you're in a competitive, distracted, commoditized market, it's really easy to learn how to become boring. You want to close up. Especially if you grew up with a difficult last name. I had the ultimate branding challenge as a little kid. What's my last name? Hogshead. Raise your hand if you thought it was a stage name. <laughs> 
People always say to me, no, that's so cool. What's your real name? Yeah, it's really on my birth certificate. I got beat up on the playground for using my legal last name. And I remember coming to my mother, Mrs. Hogshead, and saying to her, why can't we just have a normal last name, like Smith or Jones? And she said something I'll never forget. She said, it's the thing about your name that makes it different that will one day make you love it. And as soon as I got up off that therapist's couch, I knew she was right. <laughs> because I grew up in a really difficult environment. I grew up in a very challenging, competitive environment. This is my sister. She won three gold medals in the, in a, and a silver in the Olympics. When I was seven years old, she already had two Guinness Book World Records. Remember this, Nancy Hogshead, 1984, Los Angeles. Nobody applaud. So as I was growing up, I was in a, a situation in which I needed to know how to be able to stand out and add value as a seven-year-old because the same year my brother graduated from Harvard. So can, can you imagine? I was sitting there as a little seven-year-old doing my finger painting, <laughs> going, okay, well, I can't do athletics. I can't do academics. Those trees have been peed on. What can I do? So I did what you do when you're not good at athletics or academics. I went into marketing. <laughs> and I knew I knew at a young age, I knew that I needed to find a way to communicate my value immediately. And so I said to my dad, what if I wrote a tagline? He said, that's a great idea. You could write it about a hogshead. A hogshead is a barrel that holds 62 gallons. It's one of those big wooden barrels. They ship rum to the new world. So I thought about this and thought about it. Can I show you what I wrote? OK. A hogshead is a barrel that holds 62 gallons. So what's your last name, smartass? <laughs> I'm learn boring. So this is what I want you to remember. Don't change who you are, become more of who you are. The greatest value you can add is to become more of yourself. Thank you very much.